All right, so uh, we talked a little bit about me, about maps, about Mapbox, and now let's look at GLJS. So some of you coming to this course may not even end up using GLJS. Mapbox Studio may be enough for you, but it's certainly a powerful mapping API, and probably a lot of people coming to this course may be coming just for understanding um, GLJS. So what is GLJS? Why is it different? What's the point of having another mapping library, you might ask, and very reasonably so. Um, when we have you know, Google Maps API, it's fast. It, it allows you to add polygons and lines and all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, it's you know, free up to a point. We also have the leaflet, which allows you to do a lot of the same things. We also have services from Esri and other mapping uh, services that allow you to do pretty much everything that we see in Mapbox. So that's all true. And some of that is just going to be personal preference or, as I mentioned before, uh, based on the particulars of your project, uh, mainly about the data, in my opinion, and maybe a little bit about how, visually how you want it to style. But the really cool thing about GL is that it's actually moving into a different space when it comes to how maps are being rendered. So this is a little technical, but it helps um, understand kind of why we'd use GLJS. It, it fundamentally relies on something called vectors rather than something called rasters, which we often see in other maps. Now, these are a little mixed over uh, on top of each other, and I'm going to go over this in more detail as we go through, and you're going to hear me mentioning it regularly. Um, but just at a very high level, when we're looking at different types of maps, uh, if, if, you're, if you're used to using Google Maps, you, you know that it kind of loads in... Um, Sometimes when you drag fast, there's little gray areas on the map, and then the little squares will start to load in. And those squares are actually small images, and those images have been like pre-made somewhere, and then when you move around the map, you know, it's basically saying, oh, I need to get that image because you're on, you know, I need to get an image of New York City because you're on top of New York City right now on your map. And that's basically how it works. So somewhere on some computer, there's a whole bunch of images, and one of those images is a little square of a piece of New York City, and it shows you that when you're on top of New York City at a certain zoom level, okay? So that's how a lot of the maps work. Uh, you can imagine it can be fairly intensive because you actually have to have thousands and thousands and thousands of those images for all the different zoom levels, and they need to be you know, changed as roads change over time. It, it's a pretty complicated process, and that's not what this course is about. But that's just to say, that's to contrast it somewhat with how Mapbox GLJS works. Now, you still get that, like, gray loading area when you move a Mapbox GL um, map really fast, and it also loads in in what is basically squares when, when it does come in. But the, that data is actually happening in a slightly different way. And that's, that's the GL aspect of this, and, and also the, the strength of the vector approach. So they're using vectors rather than the rasters. So it still has to be rendered and loaded in, and there's some you know like slowness to the data because of that. But one of the cool things, you get a very smooth zoom. Uh, because it's vector data, you can zoom in and out, and the data doesn't need like discrete levels to show you different uh, information. It's a little hard to describe this, whereas it's very easy to see. So you're going to see that in, in the, future, um, uh, court, le the future lessons in this course. But essentially bearing that in mind, that, that GLJS gets its, its heart is that it's vector data. And that vector data is ultimately a lot more flexible and a lot more, uh, so just a lot more up to date with what the kind of modern web and modern technologies are doing. Um, and also, as part of the GL aspect, that has to do with 3D. So there's a lot of 3D kind of expanding in the browser in JavaScript. And um, I've personally done quite a lot of work with a library called 3JS. And it's fun working with 3D. There's a lot of possibilities there that uh, maybe didn't occur to us because we've been using flat user interfaces for so long. But uh, Mapbox is taking advantage of that, and we're going to see that we can do different types of 3D rendering. I'm not going to go over it in huge detail in this course, but I'm going to go over it at, at certain points and make sure that you know how to, how to do some of the 3D stuff in, in GL and also in Studio. Uh, so that's all just a little bit about GL. One thing to bear in mind is this is completely different, really, than Mapbox JS, which is their older mapping API. So I would just recommend just 
don't even don't even try to learn Mapbox.js. Make sure that when you're looking at documentation, you don't get mixed up between the two. We are looking at GL, Mapbox GLJS. It's not Mapbox.js. So make sure you don't try to kind of cross those two because you'll probably just get confused. So, okay, I think I've talked enough about just random stuff and confused you enough with different like theoretical things about Mapbox and GL and blah and data. So why don't we move into actually doing some stuff with data? Um, this next section is, is also a little bit tricky because we're not yet in all the fun visual part. But, uh, you know, it's important for you to know how to manage data and handle data when it comes to Mapbox. So that's what we're going to do next. And from there, we're going to then go into Mapbox Studio and do the fun visual stuff. And then at the end, we'll go to Mapbox GLJS and get into the code.